15 inch MacBook Air or 14 inch MacBook Pro? Well, it is a hard choice, especially if you upgrade your SSD and RAM on the MacBook. But in this video, we are gonna compare everything from the design, the displays, the speakers, the webcam, and of course, the performance and battery life to help you make a great choice. Both of these machines have 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigabytes of SSD. And what makes this a tougher choice is that right now on Amazon, you can get the 14 inch Pro for $17.50, only 50 bucks more than the MacBook Air. So should you get it? Well, let's start out with the external differences. As you guys could see, the display difference is quite shocking. I thought they'd be a lot more similar, but the 15 inch has a noticeably larger screen. And with that, as far as the dimensions, you guys could see the 15 inch is obviously larger. Let me stack this up. It is quite noticeable, the footprint of the 15 inch is longer, it is taller, but of course with that, this 15 inch is really, really thin. The full air is literally the same thickness as just the main body of the 14 inch. And if you open them side by side, it literally lines up with the ports. So the thinness of the 15 inch is incredible. And it's not only for the wow factor of it being thin, if you are typing on the keyboards, which feel identical on both, on the 15 inch, it's so thin that your wrists are above this edge here compared to the 14 inch where you definitely feel them. If you're typing for a while, that can dig in after a little bit. The trackpad on the 15 inch is also larger than on the 14 inch, but in reality, I don't think that really makes a big difference. Now, as far as the weight, the specs make them seem very similar. We have 3.3 pounds compared to 3.5, but in the hand, the 14 inch feels a lot heavier because it is smaller smaller, thicker, and heavier. Of course, in your laptop bag, you will not notice that difference, but just holding them, the 15 inch air just feels impossibly thin and light, and you do get that enjoyment factor. And another cool factor difference is that the air is available in four colors. You have your space gray and silver, just like the 14 inch Pro, but you also have starlight and this midnight blue color, which is gorgeous, but it is a crazy fingerprint magnet. Now, as far as ports, both of these have fast charging MagSafe ports. Both have two Thunderbolt ports on the left side, and the Pro has the headphone jack, but the differences come in on the opposite side. The Pro gives us an additional Thunderbolt port. We have an HDMI 2.1 port, and we have a fast SD card reader, which is definitely nice if you are a creative or if you wanna hook up to additional displays. And speaking of displays, the 14 inch can actually hook up to three displays externally compared to just one for the MacBook Air. So that is a big limitation. And if you care about that, that could be a deal breaker. Before we move on, I wanna share our sponsor's really useful app, Clean My Mac X, to clean, protect, and optimize your Mac. Now, many of your favorite YouTubers love it, and I have used it for over three years because it is simple, powerful, and fast. Clean My Mac X can delete files quickly and automatically, including hidden leftover junk files, and the Lens tool helped me find and delete a forgotten 55 gigabyte battery backup that was wasting space. It could also auto-update apps, scan and delete malware, clean up cache, monitor health, and much more. If you're unsure what to run, the assistant recommendations will let you know, and if your Mac is running slow, the menu provides a ton of useful info, along with the free up memory button that takes just one click to run. It's been on the market for 14 years, and it's on the App Store, so it is safe. Use the link in the description to try all the features with a seven day free trial or buy it with our 20% off discount link in the description for the next two weeks. Now, as far as the speakers, this is where it's gonna get interesting. We took apart the 15 inch MacBook Air and showed you guys those speaker modules and they are way bigger than in the 13 inch. Apple put in a six speaker system just like in the 14 inch. If you guys wanna see the full teardown, you guys can see it, we'll link it uh, below. But let's see if the new 15 inch can compete. <laughs> As you guys heard, the 14 inch does still sound better. 
Yes, it's smaller, but it's quite a bit thicker, so the speaker modules have more room in there. With that said, the 15 inch is not far behind and is way better than the previous MacBook Airs. So personally, I wouldn't make this choice based off speakers because the 15 inch still sounds fantastic. Now, both these MacBooks have 1080p webcams. This one right here is the 14 inch MacBook Pro, which has studio quality microphones. And this is the 15 inch MacBook Air. Now you guys let me know which one looks better and which microphones sound better to you down in the comments. And to me, I do notice that because the 15 inch is a little bit taller, uh, the angle is actually a little bit better, but the quality might be slightly worse. So let me know. And now let's get into displays because we have a lot of differences. First off, you guys saw the size difference. And when I got used to using the 15 inch since we got it, going to the 14 inch, it makes it seem small. Uh, so if you want more real estate, you want things to be larger on the screen, the 15 inch is better. But with that said, it actually has less pixels. We have 5.3 million compared to 5.9 total. So this thing has a higher pixel density, it's sharper, but realistically looking at text right now, it's hard to tell a difference. Now what's more noticeable is the difference in refresh rate. The 15 inch has a 60 hertz panel compared to ProMotion up to 120 hertz. So in the slow motion footage, you guys can see the difference. Now looking at this, Right now, I do see that the 14 inch is smoother, but it's not by as big of a difference as you get on an iPhone with the Pro model or maybe an iPad. That's a lot more jarring on the 60 hertz. So I don't know what else could be different, uh, but if you're gonna be gaming or you want just extra smoothness, the 14 inch is definitely better. And the even bigger difference is the fact that the MacBook Air has an LCD display compared to mini LED on the 14 inch. So this thing can actually go up to 1600 nits of brightness and HDR content. Now, regular viewing right now, I have both displays maxed out in brightness. So you guys see they're very similar because they both run at 500 nits. Now in the past, the MacBook Air had a lower brightness screen, a lower color accuracy. Right now, that actually matches up in standard content. But if you're looking at HDR content, that is where the 14 inches display really shines, where you have really, really bright highlights. It looks amazing compared to standard kind of look on the 15 inch air. And with that, the contrast that you get in the 14 inch, especially in darker environments, really stands out. It's pure dark compared to a grayish screen on the MacBook. So for movies, the 14 inch screen definitely looks better. Now you can get some blooming on the 14 inch, especially if you have pure black with um, pure white content, or if you're looking off angle, and that can be distracting sometimes, but it is better than having the whole screen be gray. And of course, if you wanna do HDR editing, then you need the 14 inches display. But for a lot of people using it regularly in normal rooms, they will still be happy with the 15 inch. And now it is time to compare the performance because that's what makes a lot of people wanna get the 14 inch. Of course, it has the M2 Pro processor and inside it has a couple fans to keep that cool. Whereas the 15 inch MacBook Air is completely fanless as a tiny motherboard and the cooler on there, well, it's almost non-existent. So yes, it has less cores and it could also throttle down, but let's see how much of a difference that makes in the real world. Now, starting out, I wanna run an SSD test because both of these have 512 gigs of SSD. And as you guys can see, the results are practically identical. Uh, we have the read that is just slightly off, but it can vary. And that's because the SSDs are identical in both of these. Now, of course, if you get the 256 gig base SSD on the 15 inch Air, well, that is half the speed or maybe even a little bit slower, which can affect performance, especially if you're multitasking. So the 512 is worth it. And now comparing the CPU performance, we have the M2 versus the Bind M2 Pro, so we have eight cores compared to 10, and let's see how the CPU performance compares. And here we go, in terms of single core score, the results are practically within margin of error. The clock speeds are the same, their performance cores are the same, but multi-core score, we have 9,900 compared to 12,300. So that is a difference of just over 24%. 
which makes kind of sense because, well, we have more performance core six instead of four. So we'll see how that relates to real world use. And now I have Figma, a web-based design app opened up right here. And this project is brought to us by 500 Designs, a design studio in LA. They are one of the best. And zooming in and out here, on various points in the project. Everything is insanely smooth with these high resolution graphics. You guys saw I just took a second to load that there. Let's go ahead and test out the 14 inch um, M2 Pro. Performance is basically the same, and that's what I found even with a fanless machine. For stuff like this, it does not matter. And I've selected 12 high resolution layers, and we are going to export these and we're gonna see how long they take. And this is using both the CPU and the graphics to do that, and bam! All right, so that took a minute and 48 seconds on the 15-inch Air and a minute and 38 seconds on the M2 Pro. So for tougher web-based apps, that is a little bit faster, but not by much. And for those of you guys to do more simple web-based apps, Speedometer 2.0 shows us that the performance is basically the same, so keep that in mind. Now, what about if you really push the machines? Well, I have Cinebench opened up right here. It's gonna max out the CPUs. The first test I'm gonna do is just a single run. This is gonna give us our baseline, and look at this, after just about 30 seconds, we're hitting 108 degrees Celsius on this Mac, 85 on this, and you might say, yeah, well, it has two fans. If you guys look closer, the fans are still off. That is because you have heat sinks and heat pipes that are absorbing some of the heat, where here, with the 15-inch air, just goes into the chassis. And even after just a minute, you see the 15-inch air does start to throttle, where this one, the performance is the same. And we have our scores here. We have 7,893 for the 15-inch air and 11,040 for the 14 inch pro that is a difference of 40 percent higher than what we would expect with that core clock um, difference and the core count of course we have a little bit of throttling here and that's in just a task that takes about a minute and a half and now i'm going to go ahead and switch to the 10 minute throttling test and let's see what happens with a longer workload right out of the gate the M2 Pro is pulling 25 watts compared to about 19.6, so we have more power draw, which means more heat, more battery usage, which we'll talk about in just a bit. And it looks like the 15 inch is already slowing down its clock speeds, uh, and it is quite hot, while the 14 inch is staying steady. And if you thought that the 14 inch is gonna run much cooler, look at this, we're hitting 103 degrees Celsius on multiple cores here, because Apple is prioritizing having the fans turned down low just to keep it completely silent like the air, but they're okay with having those higher temps. So if you were thinking about getting an air because it's silent, well, the 14 inch Pro pretty much is silent all the time, but the beauty of it is that you can get TG Fan Pro and you can make your own fan curve to run a little faster to keep it cooler. I'll go ahead and link that down in the description. As you guys see, the Pro is completely consistent in terms of performance, whereas our air throttled down to about 2.9 gigahertz, 15 watts, and it seems to be staying there. And we're getting close to the 10 minute mark, so I wanna do a temp test. We're at 46 degrees at the hottest on the air, and on the 14, it's just screen's actually hotter. Let's look down here. 45, so same temperature at the little center, but if you guys look, the heat actually spreads out more so on the 15 inch, because on the 14 inch, we have the fan that's pushing that exhaust towards that screen. We have a result, and wow, okay. So our 15 inch air got 7,485 compared to 11,054. I am shocked by how little performance the 15 inch air lost when it was throttling quite a bit. It was using a lot less power, uh, the clock speeds were lower compared to this one, fully consistent. That's a difference of 47%, which is a lot, but at the same time, when they just did a quick run, it was 40%. So even in this throttles, it runs more efficiently, but the performance doesn't go down by that much. Now, what about graphics performance? I'm gonna run the new Geekbench 6, which takes a lot longer here. And we have a 10 core GPU compared to a 16 core. That's a big difference. And it looks like we have a difference of 60%, 45,500 compared to 73,300, which is 
the exact difference in terms of GPU cores. So that makes sense, but it is a big difference. Now, what does that mean in terms of gaming performance? Well, I have 3D Mark's Wildlife Extreme open here. I'm gonna run the unlimited mode, which is gonna make it fair because we do have different screen resolutions. And here we see a slightly higher difference. We have 41.2 FPS compared to 67.1. That's a difference of 63% in this quick run. But that's not all. How much will the 15 inch throttle if you have a longer gaming session? I'm gonna do the stress test here, uh, which is 20 minutes long. And dang, look at that difference, guys. First off, here our stability is 99.6, meaning even after 20 minutes of gaming, the difference is pretty much non-existent. You guys see that score is flat, whereas on the 15 inch air, it started out 68.12, but then it was just drop dropped other than this blip, it went down to 55.05 with a stability score of 80%. So 20% of the performance for FPS is lost. And if we do the math, this difference here is double. So yeah, for gaming, you literally get double the performance with the M2 Pro 14 inch if you're playing, say for more than about 10 minutes or so, and that is massive. Now, what about for everybody out there that is running Xcode? Can you get away with a 15 inch air that is thin and light? I'm gonna run our Xcode benchmark here using the terminal commands to keep it fair, and we'll see how long it takes. And here you go, guys. We have 122.5 seconds compared to 98.2. That's a difference of about 25%. So yes, even in Xcode, that difference is definitely noticeable. Now, as far as photo editing, I have Lightroom Classic opened up right here. And the first thing I notice is the difference in display size. Sure, you can edit off of the 14 inch. You still see everything, but you definitely get a larger image on the 15 inch. But what about the performance? Well, of course, if you're just gonna be switching through images, you're not gonna see a difference. Even with these really high resolution edited images, I have to reload everything each time I click. Now Lightroom has this new AI denoise and enhance function, and I'm gonna go ahead and run this. The 14 inch is definitely ahead here. As you guys can see, the graphics are maxed out and we are using some CPU. We have to use more on the 15 inch because it has less performance. And that took a minute and 17 seconds for the Air compared to 51 seconds for the Pro. And that's for a 42 megapixel single image. That's a difference of 50%. And of course, if you're gonna be doing that to a ton of images at once, that difference will add up. And now I'm gonna run the export test with 500 images. Now in the past, we just did 50, but these machines are getting so fast now, and we know the 15 inch can throttle, so we wanted to up it just like we did with higher end max. And right away you guys could see that we are getting hot on the air. We're using a lot of CPU and graphics. The 14 inch Pro actually needs less CPU power because it's not limited by that. And it's interesting how much more power the 14 inch is sucking. At times, uh, double the power for the CPU and graphics combined. Oh geez. <laughs> Dang, okay, now look at this, guys. The frequency dropped like crazy here just because when we have both the CPU and GPU going so high, you get more throttling. So this is the, really the toughest test, uh, and we'll see the difference in time. The 14 inch is almost done, and I think this might have been a bad idea because the air is maybe half done here. Now here's one thing that most reviewers will not tell you. I've been waiting for a while here and now our CPU temperature is down to 74 degrees Celsius. Super cool, and why is that? Well, it's because um, after such a long time, the whole system throttles itself down. Even if it's not that hot to keep the base of the case cool, you guys can see we're running the performance cores at about a gigahertz. That is crazy from running at 3.2. So it makes it drag on. Okay guys, finally, that took forever on the air. Oh, the 14 inch took 11 minutes and nine seconds compared to 25 minutes and 35 seconds on the air. That's more than double the time. So when you look at regular, just simple benchmarks, you can't just look at that because if you're doing long intensive workloads, 
that is where the air falls apart. Now, you guys let me know if you want me to do the thermal mod video that I've done on previous models and talk about battery degradation and those kind of misconceptions, comment down below. But here, you guys see, that's a crazy, crazy difference. So if you're doing quick photo editing, exporting a few files, it's fine. But with long stuff like this, man. Now, but what about video editing? I have Final Cut opened up right here with a five minute 4K standard project that is color graded with some LUTs and film grain. And as far as playing this back, these both have media engines. They're playing back perfectly. The only difference we see is that the 15 inch is using about 70, 75% of the graphics compared to about 47 to 50% uh, just because it needs to use less of its performance to handle this. So you get a little bit more overhead for more effects on the 14 inch. And now I'm gonna go ahead and export this five minute graded project and we'll see how long it takes. And they're moving at basically the same time showing that the HEVC encoders are identical here. And because we're not limited by CPU graphics, we're not pushing the systems too hard, you're not gonna get throttling issues with this kind of standard projects. And that took two minutes and 21 seconds compared to two minutes and 22 for the 14 inch basically the same time, which is great if you're a regular video editor. Now, both of these have ProRes decoders and encoders, which is very, very awesome, even in a cheaper system. And here I have a graded 4K ProRes RAW project. Both are playing it back perfectly. I'm gonna export these to ProRes 422. And here the 14 inch is speeding ahead and we will see a difference long-term because the graphics are maxed out on both. And that took a minute and 41 seconds on the Air and a minute and three seconds on the Pro. So that's roughly 50% or a little bit higher than that difference, which makes sense because of the graphics. Uh, and then with that, if this was a longer 20 minute project, we would be getting some more throttling on the 15 inch. So as you guys could see, for simple stuff, the air still does great, even with different effects stacked. But when you start getting into ProRes, and if you do even tougher raw footage that doesn't use ProRes, well, that's where you definitely want the 14 inch. And now what about the battery life differences? Well, our 14 inch does have a larger battery. Uh, and it has a smaller display, but with that it has the M2 Pro that has more cores and it runs more power to the display for HDR viewing. Now Apple rates the Air for 18 hours of battery life, but that's for video playback and that's the same as the 13 inch and the 14 inch. But if we look at web browsing, all of a sudden we get a three hour difference in battery life. Now in real world mixed use, uh, the battery life is lower, but you'll still will see a two to three hour better battery life on the air. Now, with that said, we've been running a ton of tests. We've been recording for hours and our 14 inch is now at 25% battery life. And let's see what our 15 inch gets. We are at 32%. Now keep in mind that for some of these tests, the 14 inch got them done way faster. So it actually saved battery because it was able to just sit there. While for some, the 15 inch throttled and used a lot less power for the M2 chip, which saved battery. But overall, if you care about the best battery life, the 15 inch will give you a few extra hours. Now with that, we have another difference and that is Wi-Fi speed. Now I did a video comparing Wi-Fi 6 to 6E on the new M2 Pro laptops. There I upgraded my router, tested a bunch of different locations. But the weird thing that I found is that even if you don't have a 6E router, just regular Wi-Fi 6, five gigahertz, I got way faster speeds with the new M2 Pro with the Wi-Fi 6E chip, and I also got better range in tough spots. So even if you don't have fast internet, you'll get better reception and better speed where you didn't before. And it is weird that for the 15 inch Air, Apple did not give us Wi-Fi 6E, even though the M2 Mac mini did get it. So if you care about Wi-Fi speeds and getting the best range and reception, the 14 inch is definitely better in that regard as well. So to answer the original question, which one of these should you buy? Well, I think that after all these tests, 
it is very obvious that the 14 inch is a much better laptop, especially if you care about performance, if you wanna watch uh, HDR movies or videos, the screen is better, you have more ports, the speakers sound better as well. It is a better laptop overall, and especially if you get it for 1750 on Amazon using the link below, that's a screaming deal. Now, you can actually get the MacBook 15 inch Airs discounted at Amazon as well, so link that below. Uh, but if you're upgrading your RAM and your SSD and you're getting close to the 14 inch, it makes it a much worse deal. But with that said, you guys saw some of those tests for yourself and some of them, there was very little difference. You also get a much thinner and lighter laptop as well. You get a larger screen, which I enjoy. So I think it really comes down to the pro versus not pro naming. For once, that actually means something. So if you're doing professional tasks, you're really pushing your machine, uh, you need those ports, you get the pro. If you don't, you do simple tasks, web-based things, or quick video edits that aren't too tough, and quick photo edits, the Air is super thin and light, has a beautiful large display, not as good, but it still is great, and you enjoy that thinness uh, and lightness. So hopefully that helped you guys out to see real world tests with your particular use case. If you guys enjoy detailed videos like these, please hit that subscribe button. Um, go ahead and check out one of those great videos over there. We have a lot more coming with info for you, and we'll see you in the next video.